With the blitz of cards promising good performance at 1440p and smooth VR experiences, many of us that don't have the coin for higher res monitor or an HTC Vive might be left wondering where the newer gen cards focused on good old 1080p gaming are. AMD has answered that question first by rolling out the new Radeon RX 470 under the banner of its hashtag better red marketing campaign. And no, AMD isn't calling for the communist uprising against the Nvidia bourgeoisie, but rather focusing more heavily on the bang for the buck rather than every ounce of possible performance with its current Polaris architecture. So does the RX 470 have the potential to be the weapon of choice for the 1080p proletariat? Let's find out. G Fuel is the sugar-free alternative energy beverage to maintain focus and endurance over long days and gaming sessions. Save using the code Linus at the link below. So the RX 470 is quite similar to its much ballyhooed big brother, the RX 480. Both use a Polaris 10 series GPU, though the 470 has 32 compute units and 2048 stream processors, a bit less than the 36 and 2304 of the 480. Both use conventional GDDR5 memory, with the 470 having a rather standard complement of 4 gigabytes with a bandwidth of 211 gigabytes per second. At only 120 watts of typical board power, the card should also be well suited for lower end power supplies with headroom to spare. At 280 watts of power draw from the wall, it still has a little bit of catching up to do in terms of matching NVIDIA's current power efficiency, but at 280 watts, you can get by with a very cheap but well-built power supply just fine. This specific version of the RX 470 we have on the bench today is a Nitro Plus aftermarket cooled card from Sapphire. It features a dual BIOS switch in the top left hand corner of the card which allows you to switch between quiet mode with a low tuned fan profile or boost mode with a max clock speed of 1260 instead of the quiet modes 1206. The button right next to that switch is for LED modes, which can do basic mode changes on the fly to your lighting system on your card, or you can just use the upcoming Trix 3.0 software to do more specific alterations to the RGB LEDs. You can even remove the dual 95mm dual bearing fans by just removing one screw each, allowing you to clean or replace them with ease. The Sapphire version comes with two HDMI 2.0 and two DisplayPoint 1.4 ports, while the reference edition adds the third DP connector at the expense of one HDMI. And speaking of which, if you're more interested in the reference version, it looks virtually identical to the 480. But unlike the 480, which was billed as a VR for the masses card, the 470 is being marketed as a brilliant HD gaming for all. There actually hasn't been a card released yet under 200 US dollars at launch that can max out new titles at 1080p. So can the RX 470 be the first? Let's dive right into our benchmark results to find out. Starting off with Rise of the Tomb Raider at very high presets, the 470 got 64 FPS in DX11 and 67 in DX12 at 1080p. We saw similarly strong results in Hitman with our settings maxed out with the card even breaking the 70 FPS mark in DX11. Moving on to the classically punishing title Crisis 3, we can find that yes, the 480 can run Crisis 3 at 60 FPS with very high settings in HD, 66 frames to be exact. But there's a more interesting question to be answered as well with this card. How well does it take advantage of Vulkan, the new open source API that AMD is backing fairly heavily? Well, there are only three games currently out that we're aware of with Vulkan support, the most recent of which is Doom. Although it's not exactly the hardest game to run, Vulkan definitely gave us a performance increase with the RX 470, pushing 107 frames per second with Vulkan as opposed to 86 with OpenGL 4.5. Doom doesn't support DirectX, in case you are wondering. Notably, it beat out the more expensive GTX 1060, which managed 101 FPS in Vulkan. And speaking of expense, cost is the only area where we felt the RX 470 fell a little short. Don't get me wrong, at $180 for the reference edition, it's a very good bang for your buck card and definitely not what I'd have called expensive. However, at only $20 cheaper than the more powerful RX 480, the pricing is more than a little confusing. This card really should have been a 
bit cheaper, to be a more enticing option. However, at $70 less than NVIDIA's current mid-range offering, the GTX 1060, the RX 470 may even undercut a possible upcoming GTX 1050, only time will tell. But at least for now, if you want to slay just about anything at 1080p without paying a ton of extra for compute cores that you simply don't need, there isn't much reason to go with something else, even if you're not chomping at the bit to tag all of your tweets with hashtag better red. Massdrop has brought back their drop for the Antlion ModMic 4.0, which has been a community favorite for a long time now. Speaking of which, Linus has a review of the mod mic, which was posted two freaking years ago at this point, but if you do want to see his review of that product, you can check it out up here. The main idea behind the mod mic is a way to turn your awesome audiophile headphones into a gaming-ready headset without sacrificing the awesome audio quality that your headphones have. It attaches via a magnet system, so it's easily removed when you don't need it, and the magnets actually attach to the headphone with 3M adhesive pads, so if you ever want to remove it, you won't have any sticky residue on your beloved headphones. You can learn more about the Antlion Mod Mic 4.0 and any other drops on MassDrop at draw.ps slash LTT dash Antlion, and, or you can just click the link in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, get subscribed either way. Check out the Amazon link down below to buy a graphics card if you want to do that. Check out our shirt link in the video description down below as well. Uh, check out, go on the forum if you want to talk about new graphics cards. Try to keep it civil. I know everyone wants to defend their purchasing decisions, but let's let's just try to keep this on a level playing for everyone. Everyone's just trying to enjoy computer games. We should just keep it that way and just don't worry about it. I don't even know why I'm still talking. I'm just gonna leave. Check out the video on the screen if you wanna watch other stuff.